Hey, what's up friends? Welcome to yet another installment of Flesh and Blood Data. As always, the data is provided by Flesh and Blood Online, a very nice online client where you can play Flesh and Blood games without even needing any voice chats or any additional programs. You just hop on over to Flesh and Blood Online, you load in a deck from February.net, which coincidentally is the sponsor of today's video. So please check out February.net if you haven't already. And then you can play some games on Flash and Blood Online. Almost everything is automated from pitching, playing, etc. So you can just have a good time, test some decks, test some new strategies if you'd like, and um, just be able to practice Flash and Blood in general. So today we're going to be covering the Blitz format. Again, this is an online database, and uh, because of that, there are certain weird deck decks being played on here as well. I cannot filter those out yet. However, we do have a significant amount of games for pretty much all the heroes in the Blitz format and we have a bit of an overview of what the heroes are doing. So if we're looking at the graph right there, we can see Icelander is immensely popular in the Blitz formats right now, which is kind of to be expected. Icelander is a very fun to play deck. There's a lot of thinking involved and for a lot of Flesh and Blood players that is exactly what they like. You generally have like two groups. You have like the, the kind that likes to have the big brain gameplay with the Icelander Kano and the likes and to some extent Ultima I suppose. And then you have the group of players that just likes to go all in with aggro and just bashing face as fast as they can. But uh, as we can see from the data right there, we see that uh, Icelander right now is still doing very well, which is something we did see in the previous video about two weeks ago as well. Uh, Bravo is doing well as well as Kasai. Dorentia, however, Dorentia was doing very well in the previous video, but as we see now, she is kind of dropping off a bit. That might have partially to do with the increase of all team players in the format. Like, it seems that a lot of all teams have come to terms that they don't have the crown anymore, and they are now finally returning to the deck to play in the Blitz format, only to find out that actually the deck is very good. It's, it's, it's still doing a very decent job and managing pretty much all the heroes in the format. I want to cover this hero specifically, I will dive into some specific deck data, uh, not deck data, like matchup data for all team in a little bit. And then as we go down the list, Kano is still doing fine, Prism is doing very well in Blitz right now, which is a bit surprising to me, but then again, we don't really see that many Rhinos around, which was kind of the bane of um, Prism in general. If we look right here, like can we find Rhino on the list? Like Rhino, well, I guess in terms of games played, Rhino is still kind of represented, but whatever. We should look into a future video why Prism is doing so well. I'm not gonna cover it this video, but uh, if you want to see some uh, in-depth Prism data, let me know in the comments down below and I will do a video about it soon. So Dash is still doing well, we knew that already, but Ira is doing very well again now, which is something I'm very happy about. She is definitely doing better than Fi, like I play both Ira and Fi in the Blitz format, and I feel that Ira is a very good matchup against a lot of decks now, because she is very good at um, blocking out all those aggro decks like Dash, like Fi, and uh, even with the defense reaction, she has a decent matchups against stuff like Ultima and Bravo as well, which is... Very nice to see. All team is a bit of a worse matchup, I believe, but it's still very decent. So for the most part, we can see we have a very varied meta. The top decks above 50%, they... There's pretty much a little bit of everything in there. We have some warriors, guardians, wizards, ninjas, mechanologists. We have a, a brute in here, an illusionist, and uh, a runeblade. So actually, do I have a runeblade? No, we don't. We don't have a runeblade in the upper tiers by the looks of it. Ah, chain has been dropping in uh, win rate quite a bit as well by the looks of it. But uh, either way, it's a very good meta. We the worst decks of the format are of course the heroes that. Uh, I call like additional heroes from the supplementary sets like the Cav Dangerous and Data Doll, which aren't really played all that much to begin with. Bolton's win rate, a bit on the low side. I think Bolton is definitely a decent deck in the Blitz format if you play it like a control version, like working your way towards the Lumina Ascension. But I think a lot of players, they try to play Bolton as an aggro deck 
which doesn't really work out, especially in Blitz. It's already quite hard to pull it off properly in the CC format. So let alone in Blitz, if you want to play Bolton, in Blitz, you definitely need to go to Control Route, like just fill that deck to the brink with Defense Reactions, some Luminous Sanctions and some Light Cards here and there to charge with, and then you should do much better with this deck in general, so that's something to keep in mind. So first of all, let's look into Ira. Ira is my pet deck, it's something that I've been playing since the very beginning of... Um, me getting into Flesh and Blood, it was my my starter deck that I got at my LGS and I just fell in love with it straight away because it's a ninja, everyone on this channel should know my love for historical ninjutsu and stuff like that, so having fantasy ninja stuff in a card game, it's just my thing. I just really like playing the ninja decks in general and I'm very happy that right now we've reached a point that because there are so many Icelanders and Kainos playing in the Blitz format, Ira is making a bit of a comeback. We can see against Icelander and Kano she has a positive win rate. I would say against Kano it's about 50-50, but 50-50 is in many cases good enough in my opinion against a deck like that. I've been kind of experimenting with two builds, like one build I put uh, Oasis Respite in the deck and one build I don't. I keep switching back and forth between the Oasis Respite and uh, that all you got. And I have to say Oasis Respite is quite a good inclusion in the Ira deck, especially if you run the Fiendal Spring Tunic. However, getting to turn 3 to be able to play that without pitching a card from your hand as well can be a bit rough at times, so I'm kind of exploring if it's possible to maybe increase the blue count in the deck and add some even more defense reactions into it so that you can pitch to play a defense reaction and still have some resources left to play in a way respite as well. I'm not sure if that's gonna be super efficient, but for now I'm playing the more mid-rangey build. By the way, the deck tech is available on my Patreon already. I'm still making some changes here and there, but I make them in my my active deck list, so to say, which I am now, by the way, I do my decks no longer on FabDB, instead I'm doing them on February.net, simply because February allows us to hit that very nice play button to play the deck on the Flesh and Blood Online client. Also, if you use my decks on the Patreon, it's kind of beneficial to myself as well, because if you play the deck, I get those very nice uh, win and loss stats in the... Um, and the deck statistics as well, which is very helpful to me, and that's also very helpful to you because you get a bit more of an overview what the deck does against the current meta. But looking at the data here, like Kefdain, Katsu Data, now those are decks that we don't see much. Azalea, we don't see much. I've been seeing a significant amount of Dromai, so having a positive matchup against the Dromai deck is definitely favored. Lexi has been seeing a bit of a comeback, that's also a very favored deck. Benji I don't see much, Bolton I don't see much around either, Prism I'm seeing more and more of in the Blitz format. It seems that people are now finally settling with the deck that they enjoy playing instead of just the best deck in general. So Ira has a good matchup against those decks in general, Fight and Dash is a positive matchup because those are aggro decks and uh, with the Ira deck you can stop the Onslaught rather consistently because we have access to Flick Flex and Flick Flex boosts the defense stat of the next combo card you defend with, or the next card you defend with, if it has combo, I should say, by plus two, which is very useful because you can kind of like, when Vi has his big combo turn, you can very consistently block with two cards from hand, wait until they, for example, come in with a tree attack, play a flick flag right before you expect a lava burst or a salt wounds to come through, and then once you do, you just block with a combo card and then the Lava Burst does nothing or maybe like 1 or 2 damage, which is is not significant for an aggro deck. You can really wear them out, you can block them out, you can very patiently just keep on waiting. All you need to do is when they, when you see they have 4 cards in hand, if they attack with the Ember Blade, just let the Ember Blade come through because the Ember Blade cannot trigger the Mass of the Pouncing Links. And then you can kind of put them in a very awkward position where you can kind of control the whole situation and you can kind of make sure that when they crack their mask, 
you have your flick black ready, you have your combo card ready to block out that turn and making sure that the deck does nothing. Of course, Fi overall has a rather low win rate against the current against the current meta game, which is something that we do know for quite some time already. But people keep running it, people keep thinking that it's the, the next best thing. It really isn't. Fi is not a good deck in the Blitz format. It's not a good deck in the CC format either, if I'm totally honest, which is something that's a bit painful to say as a ninja main, but it is what it is. Like, uh, Fi has seen its best days ever since the Stubby Hammerers got banned, but um, doesn't mean the deck cannot just combo off out of nowhere. Like, the Art of War combo turn is still very big, and even for an Ira deck is very hard to stop, but... Overall, I'm very happy that Ira is uh, at least viable again, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun navigating the deck in the Blitz format against my local scene. I'm going to probably be playing this deck again in Skirmishes once the Skirmish season starts again. Of course, we just had a Skirmish season, but uh, in the words of, um, what is called, uh, Peregrine from Love Rings, like, yeah, we've had one skirmish, what about a second skirmish, right? Like, yeah, let's just have another skirmish pretty soon, because I just enjoy skirmish seasons in general. So, I guess Ultim, like I said earlier, it's a bad matchup. Ultim can pretty much stop everything that an Ira player tries to do. And every single warrior in the format, Dorantia, both of them, and Kasai are bad matchups as well. I have to say, though, as an experienced Ira player, my matchup against Kasai is more like 50-50. So I think this 33% for both Dorantia and Kasai has largely to do with people playing more of an aggressive build of Ira. And if you play aggressive Ira, you're gonna lose the race against decks like this. I am a strong believer that my mid range control version has a much better matchup against these decks simply because in our in my deck i want to say our deck because we are a we are a close-knit community on here aren't we but yeah our deck has a has that dynamic that we can very consistently deny the opponent um, to generate copper tokens which forces them into a bit of a weird play style where they need to put a reaction into the arsenal and have a good hand to kind of go over our defense reactions, but then at the same time we still have our Shukos available, so when we expect that they are doing a setup turn, we can just block with the Shukos for two, denying them their reprise on the first hit, and then in the second one we can just do like a double defense reaction type of deal, which makes it very difficult for them to really push that damage through. By the way, push through, I think it's push through the one that goes dominate to the second weapon swing, is probably their only decent win con against the Ira deck, and I have been janked out by that a few times while playing against the Kasai deck. So do keep in mind that they can out of nowhere 9 dominate you, so don't go too low on life. Because they can do that, and they will do that if they have the chance, and then you can only block maybe 3 or 4 damage with your defense reaction in your card, and that's not a position you want to be in. But overall, Ira is doing well. I'm very happy with my deck list, and again, if you want to have access to the deck, you can find it on patreon.com slash Gaming. And I will be doing a deck tech video maybe in two or three weeks after I've fully optimized the deck and I got a I got more practice in with it, went to more events, and once I got some more results to share with everyone. So the other deck I want to look into is all team. So all team, as we can see, I think. You can see the, the green areas, it's like mostly very high win rates, like 60% and up. Those are ridiculously high win rates because this deck can just fatigue out pretty much anything in the format. Then when we look at the very bottom of the list, like even his worst matchup, Prism, is a 39% matchup. That's very good, that means that even all team at his worst, He's doing very well against the current meta game, which is something that that you kind of, like, that, that's a position you really want to be in. The downside is like if we look at K Kasari, uh, Kasari, Kasai Centauri Cell Sword, uh, she is a 48.5% matchup. I think this is partially to do with there is a lot of aggro ulti players in the platform right now, and I think the aggro players cannot really fatigue out a Kasai deck properly. Of course, a good Kasai player, they can just switch to just swing with the weapon and not doing anything else, making an ulti player waste all the resources trying to stop, stop the older sword attacks. 
but for the most part I feel this matchup is like closer to a 50-50 matchup. But uh, other than that, like uh, Briar, we don't see much in Blitz, at least not in my local scene. We, I think we have one Briar player that plays Blitz, and he's a newer player at the moment, so he'll probably get stronger in the long run. But uh, overall, I haven't been seeing all that much Briar players in other scenes. Uh, Bravo is a bit popular nowadays. Of course, Bravo it has a a rather positive matchup against all team but still like that's I think that's probably like the one of the few decks that this deck cannot really win from seeing the Kano matchup so low is a bit surprising to me I would think that a all team player can very easily just go with um, Arcane Barrier 5 and just try to stop everything that a Kano player does but then again we do have those aggro all teams in the format and with a data set like that I cannot split it I don't know if these are defense all teams or aggro all teams for the most part or if everything is mixed I cannot see that but I do think that the Kano matchup as an all team player if you play your cards well you can probably win it rather consistently then again Kano's can kind of junk you out in a way what a Kano player can do against an all team is that they kind of go into a big combo turn during their own turn they draw back up, so you've already used up all your resources to block out their turn. Your turn starts, you only have one or two cards left in hand, and then they combo off a second time. That does require some pitch stacking, like putting stuff to the bottom and just uh, waiting out the game until all team has an off turn or until they finally draw into a proper combo. But Kano can work their way around an all team's playstyle quite a bit by just comboing twice in a row, like once in their turn and then another time in the ultimate player's turn. And a combo as a Kano player is rather consistently to pull up nowadays because we do have the Aether Wildfire which generally deals around 5 damage. Let's say that ultimate brings AP3 then they can only prevent 3 of the damage which means that the next attack gains plus 2. Then if they come in with something like a 5 attack into a Blazing Aether then you're already looking like 2 damage plus 7 and then you have an additional like a blazing 8 will come in for 7 plus the 2 from the 8 of wildfire there's an additional 9 and then yeah still have some buffs here and there like the metacarp is known and stuff like that so they even if they are fully blocked out they can still deal a significant amount of damage like even if they were to block out that 7 attack with a pitch tree, then that's still 4 damage coming through. That means that the Blazing Aether will come in for 6 plus 2 from the Aether Wildfire, plus some additional things like the Metacarpus node. So I think Kano, a good Kano player can probably outlive an all team. The only times that I would think that Kano would be losing is if all team has like those back-to-back Oaken old fuses, then it becomes very difficult for a Kano to keep up because those dominate attacks they really screw up a Kano player, especially if they start uh, popping up as early as turn one. Like if a K if a old team were to go first, for example, then again, as a Kano player, you kind of want to be in a position where going second because then you can play out your hand during your opponent's turn and then do it again during your turn and an additional time during your opponent's next turn. But yeah, for the most part, I think Ultim is definitely one of those top heroes out there, and let's see how it goes. I will probably do some additional videos diving into other heroes. I am still working on a formula that we can calculate these win rates and turn it into something more usable for events, because stuff like the 100% win rate against uh, Jan is what you need. That, that's data that we don't need, right? Uh, I might even start cutting those out of the data sets completely or stuff like Dorantia, uh, Quicksilver Prodigy is another deck that you hardly see anywhere. But I need to think how to do this and I need to look at how decks are represented at actual events. I need to then cross-link this data with event data to see how well it matches up with the stuff that we are gathering on Flesh and Blood Online and then we need to see how it goes. Anyways, again, this video was sponsored by February.net. Please go support them. If you can, please go join their Patreon as well. They're doing an absolutely amazing job bringing us a very good um, deck tracker and uh, way to, to get the stats and playing on Flash of Blood Online with their deck list. So definitely check them out, support them. They're great people. If you want to support me, 
my Patreon is patreon.com slash kuganigaming and I also have playmats of the channel that you can buy on kuganigaming.com. The website is a little bit slow, but it works just like me. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching everyone and I will see you all very very soon, probably with a Viscerite deck deck. So keep an eye out for that, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon so you don't miss my videos and I will see you all very very soon. Take care.